He rarely gives interviews and hasn't spoken publicly since the attack in Salisbury. I started by asking him about Brexit. I'm personally happy to see us ceasing to be a member of the EU. But I think, as I said, or I have said before, I don't think you should see that as us leaving Europe. It's leaving a European treaty. And we would obviously still have a very, very close relationship with continental Europe. Why are you personally happy? Do you see opportunities to um, perhaps forge new alliances or strengthen well, alliances? Well, essentially, you know, I see it as an issue of sovereignty. So I think that's a very important point. Um, as I've said in the past, you know, we've never been part of continental Europe's political ambitions to create, you know, a more federated union. We've always opposed that. And, I mean, I think that the EU in its current form, I'm not suggesting it's going to disappear, but it radically needs change. And if it's going to have an inner core which is, you know, politically motivated, we're never, ever going to be an enthusiastic part of that. So a good time to diverge then, if, if, well, if Europe is becoming uh, a, a closer politically. I think it's a natural point of divergence for us. And I'm not underestimating the difficulties of leaving, but I'm absolutely confident that we can survive and thrive outside a continental alliance, but still be a major player in European geopolitics. I'm interested in your um, thoughts about somebody, another perhaps unpredictable political figure, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, a man that you've previously described as a danger to this nation. What, what did you mean by that? Well, I think someone coming from my background is troubled by Jeremy Corbyn's past associations, um, some of which I find surprising and worrying. Um, he may have abandoned them now, but I don't think you can entirely, as it were, dump your past. What past associations do you, do you mean? Well, he has managed to be an enthusiastic... Uh, well, he, he's enthusiastically associated, associated himself with groups and interests which I would not say were the friends of the British nation. There is a real possibility that he could be the next Prime Minister. I mean, could you see a scenario when the security services are effectively withholding information from him? Uh, no. And if he becomes Prime Minister, he becomes Prime Minister. That'll be the democratic decision of the British people. And in that position, um, certainly not. I mean, you have to treat him as Prime Minister. So um, I wouldn't, uh, as it were, I, I'm expressing concerns about him and his political past, which I think are pretty extensively shared by a lot of people. Now, some people close to you, Jeremy Corbyn, um, have said that the, the deep state, if, by which they mean the security services, is, is hostile to a Labour government and might even use kind of dirty tricks against it. I mean, Andy, Andrew Murray, for example, suggesting uh, in an article in The New Statesman that the fact that he was denied a security pass um, may because, be because of what he called the manoeuvrings of a deep state. I mean, do you think they're right? That's rubbish. I mean, I think, you know, every government has been loyally served by the British security and intelligence community. And I imagine that every future government would be loyally served. Um, so I, I, I absolutely do not agree with that. And I don't particularly like this concept of the deep state and somehow that some sinister power. I mean, it's just, is, you know, sort of... Uh, conspiratorial thinking, which I think is inappropriate in a political context in a modern democracy. Do you think, though, that the security services has a responsibility to do its part to combat that kind of thinking? Though? I mean, to, by being more transparent, by being more open, by being more accountable? It, it, there is a secrecy surrounding it. I think that, you know, there's much greater transparency than there used to be. I mean, that's developed significantly. You know, we have parliamentary oversight committee for the intelligence and security community as part of the intelligence and security act um, and they need to keep their secrets but on the other hand to suggest that the british community is not under full political control is just not the case